Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks, and I'm so glad you joined me in another tutorial. Um, this one is done on my loom. So I, I actually used the 31 peg loom and the 12 peg loom to make this cute little cuddle bear. And uh, um, I have it on my channel as well using the Addy Circular Knitting Machine, but I wanted to, to um, put it on the loom as well and give you the option if you don't have that machine um, to be able to make it as well. So they are just so adorable and something that little hands are going to want to hold. Um, I can guarantee you that because I, I have not only sold many, but I've made many for gifts and and they're just loved. It's going to be something that, that parents will put in a keepsake for their child <laughs> when they get older and it's worn out and, and you know, then um, they can give it to them when they're married or... <laughs> have kids of their own. It's one of those kinds of things that will be a keepsake. I, I really believe that. So, um, cause it's has no stuffing in the body. It's just a very soft blankety feel. And so they, they just hang on to it. They sleep with it. They carry it around and little hands can grasp it so beautifully. Um, for this particular pattern, I used, um, this particular yarn, yarn Yarnspirations Karen Colorama Ogo. <laughs> Um, in the colorway, that one with the pink is called Lippy, and the other one is Tabby. I love this yarn so much, and so sad that it's been discontinued from what I've heard. Um, maybe you can still uh, get your hands on some, um, but if not, use your favorite bulky five weight yarn if you want the same size and the same outcome as what I've made here and it will look absolutely beautiful. Um, you can double strand your four weight yarn too and, and uh, it will make a, a beautiful project for you as well or go with a six weight yarn. Whatever your choice is uh, you're gonna love it. So thanks for joining me my friends. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That means a lot to me um, if you would do both of those things and come on over to my Facebook group and and join us over there. Show us your projects. Love to have you a part of that as well. It'll be all in the description below and uh, hope to see you there. Take care friends and enjoy the project. All right friends, so if you are ready to start your project, grab whatever five weight yarn you have and let's put a slip knot, okay, in the end. We're going to attach that to our anchor peg. Oops, I didn't leave it long or wide enough. Slip that onto our anchor peg just like this. Hold it in place. Get that little tail out of the end. And we are going to do the E-wrap cast on, okay? So behind, around, and in front. Behind, around, and in front. And we're gonna do that all the way around. Let me see if I can give you a different angle. Behind and in front. So just around, just like this. I don't put any tension, like I don't pull this tight when I'm doing it. I just let it slip through my fingers at the tension that, that, uh, it's just normal, it's natural, coming out of the ball, okay? And we go around all of our needles just like this. I call them needles because I circle in it and I keep making reference to that. Um, but pegs, we're going to wrap them all around our pegs just like that, okay friends? All right, so that's at the end. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push these all down. I'm gonna hold that with my hand and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push these all down just like this. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap one more time. So you're going to pick up your yarn. You're going to go around that first peg and wrap right on the top, right above the bottom row that you just did. And we're going to keep wrapping. Now, if you didn't pull them down far enough, you can pull them down while you go. Okay. I like to do them all at once and then do my second round. But you can, you can do a few and then wrap and then do a few and wrap. Works that way too. Okay. So we're going to wrap these all the way around. This is my cast on row. I don't, um, I don't count this. Some people do, but I, I don't, I never do. I never count my cast on row. Okay, and there we go. And now I'm gonna just hold that over peg two with my finger just so that I can knit off this last peg. Okay, so when I knit off that last one by taking that bottom loop over the top, then um, it secures this and I can let it go. So now I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna take the bottom loop Pull it over the top loop and over the peg. Okay, you can go this way if you like, but I prefer. I think I find it easier to do it this way, and you can scoop from underneath your loop and over, or you can grab it from the top and go over like this. Okay, whatever is your preference. I find I can do it faster this way, but I do naturally gravitate to the other way first. Okay, now let's get our yarn end out of the way there 
okay? Because I find when I do it this way, I get bigger tails or bigger loops here. Um, but, you know, then when I go to the next one, it straightens that out. So it really doesn't matter. You choose whatever is easiest for you to do. And we're going to work this around just like this. And this is our cast on completed. Now you're going to get a row counter. You're going to push these all down. Just like that. All the way around. You're going to get a row counter or a tally sheet with a pen and paper. Um, whatever is best for you. I like to just use my row counter here. I'm going to set it to zero. And then I always mark it when I'm done. Okay. So I'm going to e-wrap my next, my first peg. And then e-wrap the second, e-wrap the third, all the way around. Okay. So repeating that same process that we did to cast on. We're e-wrapping every peg all the way around. This is row one. Wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. There's a little, I have a little tool that I can, it's like a straw that I can, it came with one of my looms. Um, I can put my yarn end in and, um, and then hold it and just go around each peg, but I don't like to use it. Some of you might have it. I'm going to knit off that last peg so it can secure my tail. And then we're going to work our way around. Some of you might have it and love it and that's great. You use it. Um, I just can't get used to it. I don't know why. Um, I just feel that I have more control when it's coming through my fingers. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to e-wrap all the way around, okay? Just like this. Or cast, knit all your e-wrapped pegs just like this. Knit it off. Take the bottom loop, over the top loop, and over the top of that peg, okay? So you finish that all the way around, and when you get to the end, I'll see you back. All right, I finished that row, so the first thing I'm going to do is click one. I know I'm done one row. I'm going to push these all the way down, all the way around my loom. I love these two colors together, the purple loom. It's a 31 peg loom. The purple loom with this bright pink is just absolutely gorgeous. Now I can unfasten my anchor peg, okay? Take out that little knot, and then I'm gonna just take my loom hook up in behind and pull this down and through just like that, okay? Get it out of the way. So we've knit one row. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna e-wrap and knit, e-wrap and knit 35 rows okay so you continue on just as i've shown you you're going to take it from your last peg here now go around your first peg e-wrap all the way around knit them off change your row counter to two when you're done if you're going to stick with the same color and do the whole bear one color then you're going to do 35 rows of this color um, of your base color but i don't think i have enough of this fuchsia pink to do um to do all of my rows for and then to do the arms um and the ears in the same color. So I'm going to change it up a bit. I'm gonna do five rows of this fuchsia and you'll have seen that at the beginning of the video with the picture. And I'm gonna do three rows of this ivory color. It came with the ball so I know it. it's meant to go together, okay? And then I'm gonna do five rows and three and then five rows and three. That will come to 24 rows, okay? And that's what we want for our body. And so I'm gonna just continue on in that way. So I'm gonna do five, three, five, three, five, three, and then I'm going to do 11 rows for my head in this pink color. Again, if you are going to do the same color all the way around, keep keep knitting until you have 35 rows done, okay? So for this, um, I can attach this yarn and just carry this up because you wouldn't see it, but I don't like having tails in the way, so I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to lay that into the center there. I'm going to take my new color, and I'm going to put a slip knot on there and I'm going to put it on peg number one that's going to act as my first e-wrap okay then I'm going to take this yarn and put it into the center because I'm going to tie these two ends and then that acts as my first e-wrap okay and then I'm going to e-wrap all the way around like I normally would and knit off and I'm going to do that for three rounds and then I'm going to come back and we will do one more color change see just e-wrapping we will do one more color change, which is very, very simple to do. There's there's several different ways of doing a color change. That one I just I just uh, prefer. It's the, I find it's just easy. Okay, I'm going to knit this off. But be careful because when you pull on it with your hook, it makes the loop really loose. Okay, because this is the tail and it just pulls on it and loosens it. So make sure you tighten it up when you're done. Knit off all the way around. 
and then e-wrap for two more rows, do three rows in total, and then come back and see me and we will change colors one more time. If not, if you're not changing colors or you are and you don't need to see it again, keep going till you, um, if you're doing a solid color, do 35 rows. If you're doing changing color, I'm doing five pink, three ivory, five pink, three ivory, five pink, and three ivory, and then I'll see you back. All right, so I finished my three rows. So now I'm gonna take these two tails that I had before and I'm gonna tie them, okay? I'm gonna tie them so I don't have a big hole there. In a knot, and then I'm gonna just leave them. They're gonna be hidden on the inside anyway, so I'll just give them a little snip to shorten them off and make them a little bit less bulky. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to take our ivory, cut it off, put that in the center, take our pink, Put a slip knot on it. Put it over peg one. Tail into the center. We'll tie those off after I do a few rows, okay? And then we e-wrap and knit. Oops, push these all down first. You're gonna need your e-wrap and you're gonna knit five rows of the pink, then you're gonna switch it again, okay? Switching all the time until you have 24 rows. So again, I've said it a couple times now, but I'll say it again. You're gonna do five, three, five, three, five, three. That will take you to 24 rows. Then you're gonna put your base color, your main color back on, and you're going to do 11 rows. And that will take you to 35 rows, okay? So if, again, you're doing a solid color, you just do 35 rows. And when you have that done, I'll see you back and we'll cast off together. All right, friends, have fun and enjoy the process. Okay, so if you're back with me, that means you finished all 35 rows. And you know what? I would have had enough pink now that I um, am, am this far and I see how much yarn I have left. I would have had lots. But I'm glad I did this because I love, I love it. I love the the strip of, um, of ivory that's in there. So we're going to do a, a drawstring bind off. We're going to take our yarn. We're going to put it around our loom one and a half to two times, okay, approximately. Then you're going to cut it. Now you can choose to put it on a needle and then just put your needle down through the um, through the loops or you can do what I'm gonna do. This is what I do. I just lay it over the bottom of the last peg, just underneath that, that loop. Then I put my loom hook in that loop, scoop up the yarn and pull it through. Okay, go to the next one. So you can pull these up. Usually we push them down, but this time you push them up. Just like that. So I've done that first one. I'm going to go to the second one, put my hook in there, scoop that up, and pull it through. Once I get a few done, then I will take these off the off the pegs, and that makes it easier. Gives you some slack. So just like that. No need to grab a needle when you can do it this fast. So down through the loop, scoop up that yarn, and pull it through. Underneath the loop, Scoop up that yarn and pull it through. So now I'm gonna take off some of these so that I can have a little bit more slack. Okay, to the next one. Through the loop, scoop up the yarn, pull it through. I'm gonna do this all the way around until I have every peg worked. It's satisfying, I like this part of the project. Yeah, just whip it out and then take some of these off just to give you some slack and you're gonna do that all the way around removing every every stitch off each peg once you get all the way around so you're gonna do this to every peg and then take them off the peg okay just like so all right so have at it my friends and when you're done I will see you back. All right, so we have our beautiful piece. I'm going to stretch it widthwise and lengthwise to soften it up and line up all those beautiful rows. Look at that. We're going to deal with this part later, okay, because we are going to use our crochet hook and we're going to close it. But this is the side that we're going to draw string closed, OK? 
okay? And all we do is pull on this. And we're gonna finish this first, okay? So you're gonna just keep pulling on it just like this until you tighten it up at the top. Smoothing it out so that it's nice and even and well done. I'm gonna cut this off just a little bit so it's not so difficult to work with. I'm gonna grab my needle. Okay. And we are going to reinforce this around, okay? So we're gonna go into that first stitch right here. Pick up the top row of stitches and go all the right way around the top row here. We're just going to reinforce it just like that and pull. You can leave the first stitch that when you're when you're binding off that first stitch that you went under and pulled your, your string through your yarn through you can leave that that one on your loom and do all the other ones and start removing them to get slack and then when you take off this first one when you go under and you take that one off you can go back over to this one and um, go under it a second time and uh, then it will be completely connected and you don't have to find that first uh, stitch there to, to join this to um, that's just another way to do it I, I just always do it the way I just showed you but that is an option okay so I'm going to now I've gone around I'm gonna just pick up a strand there I'm going to tighten that then I'm going to just take this into the inside right through that center hole right there picking it up with my hand on the inside and pulling it through and I just gave it a little extra tug and that knot went on to the inside then I'm going to reinforce it on the inside here too okay so one more one more knot and if you're feeling like you need to do another one, it doesn't hurt. It's going to be on the inside, okay? So now we're going to take that off. I'm going to just trim it up just a little bit. And we've got this part so far. Now you're going to take a piece of yarn. Um, I'm going to use the pink. I'm going to get one that, that will go one and a half to two times around this neck just so that I have extra. And we're going to do our gather. Okay, so we're just going to get ready. Let me just grab a little bit bigger needle here. We're going to get ready um, for our draw, for, for our head. We're going to make another piece. Because I do not like to stuff a single layer and then you see the white through there, um, we are going to do another head that fits inside of here and we're going to stuff that head, then put it in here. And it just, that kind of attention to detail makes your project look so much better, okay? But what we're going to do is this is the top of row 24. And I know that because of my color counts. I have five, six, seven, eight. 13, 16, 21, and 3 is 24. So this is where I'm going to um, begin my gather. But if you did one solid color, then you're going to go down to the bottom here. You're going to count your first stitch. And you're just going to count up 24 rows, okay? Simple. Easier than trying to find the first row up here. And so once you get to the 24th row, you're going to just pick up a row, go over a row, pick up a row. Just like this. Go over, under, over, under. If you want this to be simple, add a second color like what I did because then there's no guesswork. You know where that row is, okay? And it's gonna be perfectly even. So pick up a row, over row, pick up, over, pick up, over, pick up. We're gonna go all the way around. And I'm going to take my needle off that. I'm going to just cut this a little shorter because it's not necessary to have all those long tails. I'm going to set this aside. We are going to grab our loom, same loom we were using. We're going to grab the same color as our, as our head there. And we're going to, let me just grab it. We are going to do a drawstring cast on, okay? Because we're going to need to cinch both the top like what we did here. We're going to need to do it on both sides, okay? So we're going to put a slip knot on our anchor peg right here, okay? Pull that tight. Oops, that was an epic fail. Let's do that again. Pull that tight. I'm going to get that underneath there. Then what we're going to do, this is my first peg. I'm going to go behind it and in front, behind in front. I'm not putting, I'm not pulling this really tight. I just want it nice and loosely around here, okay? Just as it slips through my fingers, I'm going to go back and forth just like this, weaving in and out of those pigs, okay? 
till I get to the end. Just like that. Okay, it's behind that last peg. Then I'm going to um, put it in front of peg one and in front of peg two. And I'm gonna knit that off just so that I can hold it in place, just like that, okay? And then you're going to just push all these down just to the halfway point, just like that, okay? You're gonna come back to where you left off. And what you're gonna do is you're going to keep putting this all around the top, just like that. See how I'm doing that? All these little loops are over every second peg. And I'm gonna just um, hold that across. And everyone that has two loops, I'm gonna knit off. So I'm gonna knit that off. I'm gonna move my thumb down. I'm gonna knit that off. That one. I'm gonna just keep pulling this around like that. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna knit off that one. Miss that one, because it only has one. Knit off that one. Okay, keep putting that all across the top. Knit off every one that has two. Just like that, okay? I'm gonna do that all the way around for my cast on. That way, um, we can draw string closed this end as well as the other end when we take it off of our project and that's what we need for this head, okay? So I'm just about done here. Doing this with an awkward, <laughs> in an awkward kind of position, but we're making it work, okay? So there, it's done. And it's gonna go in front of that last peg there. And then I'm gonna come behind. Once I push all these down, let's push down a few here. We're gonna start e-wrapping. So I'm not gonna count my cast on. I'm gonna start my row count now. So e-wrap all of your pegs. Just like what we did for our body. We're gonna e-wrap all the way around. Oops. Gonna push these down. There we go. E-wrap all the way around. Just like that, okay, I'm at the end here. And we're going to hold that with our finger or however it works best for you. We're gonna knit off that last one. Then that holds our, our yarn tail in place and we're gonna knit off, okay? Then from there, we're gonna mark our, our counter or tally it on your sheet, however you prefer to do it, as row one. And then we're going to push down our row, we're gonna e-wrap again, and we're going to do that for 11 rows, okay? So this counts as row one. And when I'm done this row, I'm gonna e-wrap again, knit off, that's row two, and I'm gonna do it for 11 rows. Then I'm gonna cast off the exact same way that we cast off for the body, okay? I'll come back and do that with you. But that's row one complete. I'm gonna push them down just like that, okay? I'm gonna release my anchor peg because it's already getting tight. Pull that into the center. Come on, just like that, okay? I can undo that little knot now or later. I might as well do it now. Okay. And I'm going to e-wrap my next row. And knit it off and, and keep going till I have 11 rows done. And when I'm done, I'll see you back. All right, so I have my 11 rows done. What we're gonna do now is we're going to cast off. So we're going to wrap our yarn around our loom one and a half times at least, and then we're gonna cut it off. And we're gonna cast off. Now I showed you the cast off method using um, the loom pick on the body. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it using a needle, which you probably know already, but if you don't, then you can choose which way you like, okay? So I am going to go through that first, the, or the last stitch, just like that, from the top to the bottom. And then I'm gonna go over to the next one, go from the top to the bottom. Or you can go from the bottom to the top, it doesn't really matter, I just keep it consistent. And then we're going to go ahead and 
and gather up those stitches with our needle just like this. And when I get a few done, I'm going to lessen the slack by taking them off here. So I'm going to just do two more here. One and two. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, oops, just make sure that that comes around that way. I'm going to leave this one on because I'm going to loop it through that one one more time when we're done. So the second one that I did, I'm going to remove, okay? And I'm going to just do a few more here before I remove these ones. I'm going to keep going. And we're going to go around our loom just like this. I like the I like to use the um, loom pick, to be honest with you, but this works. This works great too. And we're going to just remove our stitches like this. And when you get five or six worked, you can start removing more from the back here just to give you slack, okay? And you're going to continue that process all around your loom till all of your stitches are removed. And when I get to the end, I'll see you back. All right, I made it all the way around. I can take some of these off. Just like that. And then I am going to do this first one that we did, which is the last peg. I'm going to redo that one one more time so that we close up that gap at the start, okay? This is why I don't like using the needle because it always gets caught around my, <laughs> my pegs, okay? So then we've got that joined. We can now remove all the stitches that are left. And we'll put our, our loom aside. And now we're going to stuff our head, okay? So we're going to just stretch this out, okay? Widthwise and lengthwise. Then we're going to, I, I put a smaller needle on there because it works better when I'm going to cinch up this end here. We're going to pull on the one end, making sure we smooth it out as we go, just so we get a nicer top, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around that top layer of stitches, that first row, and I'm going to reinforce it and pull as I do it. And it'll close it up even more. Okay. I love this pattern. You know, this is such a cute little bear and little hands are going to love to hold it. And you know how I know that? <laughs> because I've made this pattern on my Addy circular knitting machine and you can find that cuddle bear pattern if you have an Addy circular knitting machine or if you're thinking about getting one go look for that pattern on my channel it has been such a popular video and um, any child who I have given one of these toys to as a present has cherished it like has loved it they've taken it the one my one um, little girl in particular she sleeps with it every night <laughs> it's been ragged and I had to I had to remake another one exactly the same so that she wouldn't realize that uh that it was being switched out <laughs> and so that will go in her keepsake bag or box or hope chest I'm sure and then when she's uh, growing up um her mom will pull it out and say this was one of her most beloved toys that's the kind of, of item that this is um you're gonna be able to sell a lot of them in craft sales first I'm gonna just Take it to the other side here. We tied, you saw me tie that knotted it off. I'm going to now do the same thing with this side, but before I tighten it completely, we're gonna add our stuffing, okay? So yes, these, these will sell really, really well in craft sales. They make beautiful gifts, add them to a blanket, make it the same color you make a baby blanket and give it as a gift. Just absolutely precious. Um, it's gonna be a well-loved item. Uh, I can guarantee you that, okay? So I'm going to, Continue stuffing my head. And again, I do a double head because I do not. You can even see in this one, and it's not even full yet. You can see the white that's coming through it. I do not like that on on um, any kind of a crocheted or knitted piece. I, I don't, I just do not think it looks nice to see that through there. And so um, I make a double head and then you don't see it, but I'm going to get some more fiber fill and fill that a little bit fuller. All right, doesn't need too much more, but I'm just gonna put a little more in there, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten this up. And yes, it's coming out of this inside one, but that's okay because it's going into the head of the other, of the body, okay? And we are going to we are going to sew this closed, okay? So yes, I filled it um, quite full. 
but it's not, it, it's still really pliable and really soft. Okay, that's what you want. And if you don't get this snugly closed, don't worry about it because it's not going to come out. You have you want to close it, but you don't have to make sure that it's it's completely tight um, because the stuffing's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to just go around. I just want to reinforce it so it never has the opportunity of, you know, snapping and breaking a piece of yarn and then the toy is destroyed. Okay, so we're going to just continue around like that. And I'm going to go ahead. That's good. Just like that. These stitches really, really expanded quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to just play with this after I get this knotted off, just to even it out. Even though it's on the inside of the head, I still think attention to detail is, is very, very important. And uh, I can just even this out by hand manipulating it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut this off because I do not need it. You don't even have to hide that. But I'm just going to roll it. and hand manipulate it by just pulling some of these rows over because it's just pulling on one side. That's why it's that's why it's peeking out more on one side than it is on the other, okay? And when I get it to how I like it, I think that's perfect. I am going to grab the head, the body, okay? We're going to open it up. We're going to put that top part of the head into the top part of our body where the head is at the top there. We're going to pull this down and we're going to tighten this, okay? So I tighten it a little bit. Then I get my hands in there and I push it up even a bit further. Okay, pull this down. And tie that tighter. Oops, be sure you don't break your yarn. Okay. You have to manipulate it and play with it a bit, but you'll get it. See, just like that. And I'm going to tie a knot to secure. And then I'm not going to cut this off because I may want to, to tighten my neck again after I um, finish the bottom here and take a closer look at it. I might want it a little bit tighter. And we can do that by reinforce by going around one more time um, in and out with our needle and tightening that one more time. But this is what our head looks like. And you cannot see the stuffing through that. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful outcome. And so that's why... That's why I like to do a double head, okay? I do that on my Addy knitting machine as well. But now what I want you to do is grab a crochet hook. For me, a five millimeter crochet hook works. But you can um, truly use whichever whichever hook size you like because it's, uh, it's not gonna really make a difference. The point is we just wanna pick up our stitches here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to fold this so that our end here is on the side. We want it on the side. So then our head is going to become, this string might not be in the center of the front. That's okay. It doesn't need to be. But this has to be on the center on the very side, just like that, okay? And then we're going to smooth this out. Just like that, front and back. And then we're going to just pick up the one corner on the opposite side. And you see these little loops where we cast on? They're very easy to see, so don't panic, okay? They're very easy to see. There they are, right there. We're going to pick up the one at the bottom there. Then we're going to go underneath it with our hook. We're going to go over to the one at the top. We're going to hook our, put our hook under it, pull it through that loop that's on our hook. Now we have that loop, this loop on our hook from that top row. We're going to go down to this next stitch, which is very easy to see. And you're going to pick, take it and put it through the loop on your hook. Then you're going to go up to the top again. And you're going to take that next loop, pull it through the loop on your hook, go down to the bottom, take that next loop, put it through the loop on your hook, and the next one at the top, put it through the loop on your hook. We're going to go back and forth like this till we get to the end, okay? All you got to do is roll it up with your fingers and you can easily, easily see where those loops are, okay? Just like that. And we're going to work them all. We're going to have a beautiful finish at the bottom. Okay. 
it doesn't matter if you grab the loop like this from the top and just grab it through and pull it through or if you go underneath it doesn't matter the point is is you're just picking up that that loop and putting it through the through the loop on your hook okay however that works for you it's not going to change the look of the of the seam okay so we're picking up that next one and the next one and the next one next one to the end I see that one and that one I can pick up then you're gonna take this yarn tail that you have you're gonna loop it through and there you have it look at that it's absolutely beautiful and it's stretchy and it's wonderful you're gonna put this on your needle you are going to tie it off in a knot And one more. And you're going to hide that up inside your work. Just like that. Cut it off. And there you have it. So we've done our body and our head. And it's looking wonderful. Now you're going to grab your looms, the one that we used for the uh, project. Also the yarn color of choice for the arms and the ears and your 12 peg loom. But before we do that, we're going to finish this off. Okay. I kind of like the size of that neck. So I'm not, I'm not going to um, make it smaller, but I am going to tidy it up a little bit. Again, I always say attention to detail is important. You can see where we wove in and out of it before. So this is like, I call this a hill and I call that a valley. That's um, where the yarn is going over. This is where it went under. That's a hill, that's a valley. I'm gonna try and do the opposite. So I'm gonna go over the hill, under the valley. Okay, just like that over the hill, under the valley, and you will be shocked at how neat it makes this neck look, okay? It takes a little bit of, a little bit of uh, time to do this, but it's well worth it, that, that attention to detail. What is this? That's the yarn end from my body. I'm gonna cut that off, work that through, okay? Glad that poked through now. And then we're going to go over the hill, under the valley. Over the hill, under the valley. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. If I run out of yarn on this side, I'm gonna just join this one and, and meet up wherever it meets up, okay? So continue to do that. And if you see a row that's a little bit spread out, you can work that with your fingers. Um, take your needle, poke it in there, and just spread it out and make it more beautiful, okay? So go ahead, finish that, and then we will work on our arms and our ears. All right, so I've made it around, actually joined to the other one and met the two together. And I'm just gonna tighten this. So I'm gonna tie a little bit of a knot. And then we're gonna hide those ends, okay? Now I'm gonna hide this up into the head because the head is all pink. If I hide it down into here and this pink starts to poke through that, that ivory, I don't like that, okay? You won't see it as much if it, if it does poke through which it won't because it's up in the stuffing. Um, but I like to match color for color even when I'm hiding yarn ends, okay? So just like so, pull that out. And then look at the difference that made on the neck, okay? All those ridges were covered. And it just makes for a smoother neck. Now you're gonna just make sure that your sides are nice and even. Move this around with your thumb, your thumbs and your fingers if you have to, just to make sure that there's a, just as much space at the front there as there is at the back here, okay? And you have your nice straight line, your nice straight row coming up here and your nice straight row coming up here, okay? Then you know you've got it perfectly centered so when you put your arms on, it's gonna be beautiful. All right, my wonderful friends, are you ready for the arms? We're going to take our loom. We're going to put a slip knot on our anchor peg. We're going to do a flat panel over 15 pegs. 
So we are going to E-Rot Pig 1, Pig 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and we're gonna go around peg fifteen. But before we do that, we're gonna push these down. Peg fifteen will be our turning peg for this first row here. Okay. All right. So peg fifteen, you're just gonna go around it. Then you're gonna go behind peg fourteen and e wrap it the other way. Let me do that again. So peg 15, you're gonna go behind and in front, then behind peg 14 and E-wrap all the way back. Okay, just like so. Okay. We're gonna hold that and we're going to knit off. So I'm going to knit off that first one so that it, I can release that yarn in and then I'm going to knit them all off. This is my cast on roll. Okay. Knit them all off. Push them down when we're done. 15 only has one loop but we will get that one worked in the next round. Okay. Now we are going to go behind peg one and in front. And then we're gonna go behind peg two and in front and E-wrap all the way around. Okay, all the way to peg 15. This is considered row one. We're gonna E-wrap peg 15. Hold that with our fingers, however works best for you. Knit off peg 15. Then you can drop that and go down the row and knit off. Okay. Just like this. Row one complete. So mark your tally sheet or your counter, whatever works good for you. I'm gonna mark my counter. There we go. Now we're gonna go back and do row two. So we're going to take our yarn, we're gonna go around peg 15, and we're going to E-wrap back. This is row two. Okay, you're gonna continue this process. Oh shoot, continue this process until you have knit 11 rows, okay? This is our arm, we're gonna knit 11 rows. And we're gonna do this whole process twice. Okay, so now I've got that one. I'm gonna knit off this last stitch that I did and down the row, row two. Okay, so continue in that manner until you have 11 rows knit. And when you're finished row 11, see me back. All right, friends, have fun. All right, so there you go. You've got your 11 rows. And if you did it exactly how I did it, um, your yarn end will be the opposite end of the anchor peg, okay? So now we're gonna cut off a long tail and we are going to cast off, okay? So I'm going to bring it around that peg and I'm going to go under that loop and I'm going to just scoop it up, just like that, okay? Bring it underneath the next loop on the next peg scoop it up and pull it through scoop it up and pull it through scoop it up pull it through we're doing the drawstring bind off here pull it through pull it through you can start taking these off if you want but i find with 15 pegs only only 15 pegs you could probably do the whole thing and then remove it all okay pull it through Pull 
pull it through, go all the way till this last loop. Then you can take all your, your stitches off your pegs and I'll see you back. This is our piece. We have it off the machine. We're gonna just give it a little stretch. Okay, and you're gonna make two of these, okay? This is what's gonna form our arm and we're going to make two of them. You're going to now take that cast off end and you're going to cinch it in just like that, okay? Smoothing it out as you go because you want a nice, nice top, okay? We're gonna cut this off a little bit. Not too much because you need it to sew down the side, down the um, length of this, but I had way too much, okay? So we're going to, and if you know me and you watch my videos, you know that that often happens. I always take off more than I need. <laughs> I guess better to be safe than sorry, right? So now we're gonna pick up this first row of stitches. This is not new to you, we've done this already. Okay, and we're going to drawstring this closed. Just a beautiful closure, just like that. Okay, and we're gonna bring it out to the one side, just like this. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna just tie off a little knot there to close that top end, just to join the, that first row of stitches. One little knot, just like that. Now what you're gonna do is we're going to do the invisible stitch or the mattress stitch. You're gonna just look for that first row of stitches where you can see the wide part of the V right there is to the left, okay? Right there and there and there. So my V stitch is going from the top to the point up to the top. That's the direction it's going in that side and it's the direction that I want it to go in this side. Now, if I have to um, fold that over half stitch to, to get there, um, then I can I can do that. It's not a problem. But what I'm going to do is now I'm in coming out of this side here. So I'm going to go into that stitch. I'm going to go under that first stitch, pick up that bar, go under the next one and pick up that bar. Pull that through. I'm going to go over to the other side. And this is where my row is going to be. I'm going to go into the bottom there. I'm going to pick up that first stitch. There's the bar there and go into that second one. There's the bar there. Okay, I'm going to pull that through. Then I'm going to go back over to the, don't pull it too tight yet because it's harder to see the stitches then. This is where it's coming out. I'm going to go into that stitch, pick up that first bar, second bar. Okay, just like that. I'm going to go over to this side. I'm going to go in where I came out, pick up that first bar and that second bar, picking up two stitches just like that. Okay, I'm going to go back over where it's coming out on this side and do the same thing. Two bars right there. Back over to this side. In where it's coming out, two bars, just like that, okay? Because this is a short piece, I can do this all the way up before I tighten it. Picking up two bars. And going over to this side. Picking up two bars. And two bars. And right up until I get to that cast on row, right there, okay? And I'll do the same on this side. And now what I can do is I can take this tail end, okay? And I can pinch the bottom right at the bottom here. And I'm gonna pull this. And that is going to join my two ends together and give me a beautiful seamless join, just like that, okay? So now that we have this into a tube, we're going to put this into the middle. So if you went off your line a little bit, it really actually doesn't matter. I wanted to show you um, how to do it the right way first. <laughs> Um, and then then tell you that it really didn't matter so that you um, so that you get in the habit of doing it right even if the, if you know even if you're gonna hide it okay so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to just go ahead and, and um, leave this little tail out I'm going to use that as my center and I'm gonna fold this in half just like that okay and from there we are gonna do the exact same thing that we just did we are going to fold it in half we are going to find our row. Here's my row where the wide seam part of the stitch is, is to the left. And here's the row where it's to the left there. And again, on a small piece like this, if, if you don't completely match it up that way, that's okay. I'm gonna trail this up to the, to the end here. And I'm just going to tie a knot here, just to get that, just to get this, um, I don't know where that loop's coming from. That's coming from the work, so that's okay. I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to just tie a knot. Just like that, okay? Now we're going to mattress stitch all the way down. Same way that we just did. 
finding our two side rows, I'm going to go in, pick up two, pick up two, lay that flat over. I'm going to go back into where I came out, pick up two bars into where I came out, pick up two bars. I'm going to pull this tight. Okay. And then I'm going to continue on down. This is the row that I'm coming out of. Nope. That's not this one is. And I know that because the wide part of the V is facing down. Okay. And then I'm going to go back into here, pick up two, pick up two, up two, just like this, okay? So you get right down to the end, then you're going to pull it again. Beautiful. Oh, I love the sound of that when that happens, okay? And then we're going to just make this go around that top row of stitches as we did before, just so that we can make sure that that end that we just sewed forms that tight little circle that's at the top of, this, of the row there, okay? Just like that. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to tie one tiny wee little knot there. I'm going to poke this down, put my finger in between those layers, and I'm going to poke this down through the stitch and bring it up, okay? Pulling that knot in. Just like that and I've got my got my arm made perfectly but what I want to do now is I want to knot this off too because if I pull on this I'm gonna compromise the the shape of my hand but I also want this seam to be on the back so I'm going to take these two layers that were here you see there's there's still two layers that are not sewn together I'm going to take them and I'm going to make this seam in the back center just like that okay then I'm gonna once again this little loop is just from my stitching that got a little bit wider, okay? I'm just going to make a little knot there into the middle. And the reason why I did that is so that if I pull on this, I'm not going to compromise the look of this by gathering this end there, okay? And so now all I'm going to do is tuck this little one on the inside because I don't need it anymore. Could have got rid of that before, but I couldn't remember if I needed it or not, but I didn't, okay? Tuck that in there and I'm going to just very very easily sew this up so it closed okay nothing major I'm just doing a, a rough job of it going to the middle here rough job meaning I'm not doing it really tight I'm just uh, I'm just putting two stitches on either side of the center just like that to close it up nice and even give it a little knot and there we have our arm okay now for me to sew it on now this is going to probably be a little too short now, so I'm going to have to add to it. But what I do is I then take this into the center of that piece, just like that. And then I take my body. Okay. And now that I have this in the center, I want to make sure that this stitch, that the seam is in the back where I had, this is the front. I'm going to then go to the side and I'm going to pop that. We made sure that this was straight. I'm going to just pick up a row between the neck and the body just like that and I'm going to pull it through and I know this is centered because I have the center yarn in the center of this piece and it's in the center of the side there and so then I know that it's perfectly centered and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put two stitches on either side either side of this arm so okay we'll just pull this up here that's the center this is too short it's going to cause me some problems but I'm going to go pick up between the center and the end there the middle and so between the center here and this end I'm going to go into the middle there then I'm going to go into the head and I'm going to pick up another stitch okay just like that then I'm going to come down and I'm going to pick up this very top stitch on the side of the arm right like that okay just like that and then I'm going to go back down into the neck Oh, I hope I'm in the camera. 
and pick up a piece. And the reason why I like to get down into that that top the top stitch of the side there is because then it angles my arm in, and I don't have a I don't have a like a corner here. It's it just nicely rounds it into the neck, okay? And so from there, I take my needle and I put it back into the center. I might have enough one here, okay? I give that a good tug, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up the middle there. I'm going to attach it between the head and the neck, just like what I did on the other side. Pull it, then I'm gonna grab this end stitch right there on the side. And then I'm gonna grab this piece right here again. And I'm gonna pull it, okay? Now there was a, we saw that big loop there the whole time from before. So I'm gonna grab it again, attention to detail. If you see something that's not right, yeah, go ahead and you fix it. Now that looks better, okay? And I'm gonna just pick up this one. So you just work it so it looks beautiful. And I made it with this length of yarn. I'm so impressed, okay? So then I do not knot this off finally yet because I'm gonna make my second arm. I'm gonna attach it to the other side the exact same way, but I don't tie off until I have both attached so I can make sure that I have them lined up the way I want to because if I have to remove one for whatever reason it's easily done if it's not tied on so there we go that looks beautiful I'm going to make my other one attach it and as soon as I'm done attaching that we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our ears and then our little snout okay so go ahead or the nose whatever you want to call that little piece <laughs> okay so go ahead make your second one attach it and then see me back all right friends isn't this just so beautiful oh just am loving it so very much. It's just so pretty. Now it's time to do the ears. I've already put my um, anchor peg on here. Put the yarn on my anchor peg. I'm using my 12 peg loom. We are going to do the ears over five pegs. So just five. And we're going to do um, the drawstring cast on. So behind, in front, behind, in front, behind. We've used five pegs there. Now we're going to go around that fifth one and then over top of the front of all the other ones, okay? Let's get this out of the way. So we're gonna just carry that across. We only have two to work off. So we're gonna work that one and that one. All right, so we have our cast on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come behind, so I'm caught up on my table here, behind that first peg and in front, and then we're gonna do our E-wrap by going behind and in front. Just like this, okay? We're going to knit off that first row. Row one, and we'll catch that first peg in the next round. Then we're going to come around that fifth peg and then behind the fourth, behind the third, behind and in front of the second and the first. We're gonna knit that off. This is row two. Okay, push those down. Okay, we're going to come around peg one like that and then behind peg two and E-wrap like this. Knit off, this is row three. You're going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for nine rows. Then you're going to cut off a tail. Don't forget to release your anchor peg too. You're going to cut off a tail and you're going to cast off the same way we've been doing. Um, pulling it underneath, taking it underneath the, the yarn loop and then pulling it through and casting off. Okay. So make two of these. You do a, a drawstring cast on over five pegs. You're going to knit nine rows. Then you're going to um, do a drawstring cast off. Okay. When you have both of those done, come back and see me. All right, my peeps, we have it off the loom. I've got two of them made. So now we've got a drawstring end on both sides. Let's just take one out of the way. We just need one to show you. You're going to pull that drawstring tight on that side, okay? And you're going to just reinforce it. It's such a fun afternoon. We have a beautiful, beautiful um, gift shop and like, it's not a resort, but it's got like a flea market and it's it's like a, a beautiful touristy kind of um, place out at the park close to my house, about 10 miles down. And I haven't been there for a while. It's got like beautiful gift shop, restaurants, um, 
all, like several gift shops and one in a flea market and all kinds of things. And I thought, I'm just going to go by myself and wander around, <laughs> grab a coffee. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to pull it tight, grab a coffee and, and just uh, look. And, and I had such a nice time. You know, I wanted to go by myself because I need some new clothes. <laughs> and they have a beautiful, beautiful um, shop there. A couple of them, actually. And I was so successful. I was so happy. I got myself a few things. And and uh, now it's time to go through my closet and throw out some of the other things that I don't need. And Okay, so here we've got both ends cinched just like that. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to pinch these together just like this. Okay, so just put your sides together. Then you're going to just weave in and out okay just like that and you know what you don't have to count your stitches like you don't have to do this even you just go in and out that's three and that's the fourth time just like that okay and the reason why you're going to do that is because then once you have that length um ready to gather you're going to just pull on that see and the magic happens you're going to pull on it and you're going to get a beautiful looking ear just like that you're going to take these two ends that you have going on there. You're gonna tie them tight, as tight as you can without breaking them, okay? You're going to take this shorter one of the two and you're going to get that out of the way right away, okay? So just work it up into your work. Take it up into your work, pull it through, cut it off. And we've got an ear, but we're going to do one more thing to it before we sew it on. We're going to just take our two ends, two little points there, and bring them together. Just to make it a little bit neater. See how that's done? It's just a little flatter on the bottom, easier to sew on. I'm going to just go through that one more time. Just like so. Okay. And then I've got my half circle ear. Perfect, just like that. We're gonna take the other one and do the same thing, but we're going to bring this yarn end out to the edge, okay? Just to the bottom edge, just like that. And again, I always then go ahead and knot it off so that when I tug on it, I'm not gonna gather where it's coming from. It's gonna be perfect, just like that. We're going to take our body and our arm. We're gonna follow that line all the way up in the middle there. And there we go. Here's where my point is. I've got about, let me see, a half a little finger. <laughs> Our fingers are all different lengths, so that's not going to be very good. But I'll measure that after I get this on. I'm going to pick up some of the head. Then I'm going to pick up the base of my ear. Okay, just like that. I'm going to go this way, actually. I'm going to pick up some of my head. I'm going to go down through as many layers as I can there. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick up just the base of the ear. Front and back, just like that, see? And I'm going to come down. I'm going to follow that same row down. This is my row. Um, until I get to the last stitch and then I'm going to go just a little bit forward. So I'm just going to, this is third stitch. You don't need many on here. Okay. Then I'm going to put the fourth one in there. Oops, that one gave me a little bit of hassle. Okay, and then I'm going to go just a little half a stitch forward. I just feel it makes the ear sit better. And then I'm going to go up the side just a little bit. And then pull it down. Then I get a rounded ear on the bottom. I don't have a little jut out, jut out there. Okay, and then that is perfect. I'm going to do the other ear. I do not tie this off in a knot like I've told you before. I'm just grabbing my tape tape measure here. I don't tie that off in a knot until I have the second ear on so I know exactly um, I, I can see if it's right. This is exactly an inch. Okay, an inch from the, from the center. I'm going to put the other one on and I'm not going to um, knot them off until I look at it after I've gotten them on to see if I like the positioning because if I knot it off it's harder to undo the knot and then to remove it and reposition it. So go ahead, put the other one on um, in the same way and when you're done that we are going to grab this loom again and I'm going to grab this ivory whatever color you want for the nose that's what you grab and uh and then we'll, we'll do that part next okay okay friends 
they're perfect. And just so you don't think you're the only one that struggles with the ears, I had to do this one three times. Not make the ear three times, but place it three times. And I don't usually have to do it that many times, but I just could not get it placed where I wanted it. Um, and when you're when you're um, when you get them on, make sure that you take up on the side here and tack it down to your um, head on both sides there. You don't want to have a little ridge underneath either of the top or the bottom of your ear. So just finish it off that way by going up, taking a little piece um, off the side here, and then sewing it down just like that. Okay, before you tie off. Now we're going to do our nose. So I'm not going to do this one with you either because it's repetition, except for to say that you're going to cast onto your 12 peg loom. You're going to do the drawstring cast on, just like what we did um, with the inside head of the bear and just what we did with the um, with the ears, okay? So you're going to do a drawstring cast on just like that. You're going to, some people go behind that first peg um, and then go around. I go, I always go in front just like this, okay? Of that first peg as well. You're going to go all the way around like this. You're going to knit off every peg that has two on them and then you're going to e-wrap six rows okay so you're going to do just how we've been doing it to this point you're going to e-wrap six rows and then you're going to cast off do the drawstring cast off okay and when you have that done i will see you back all right so i did six rounds on this little cutie <laughs> i love this loom okay and we're going to cast off now again you don't have to do this this uh last needle first you can start with that one but this is just how i do it Okay, and then we're going to cast off all the way around and do this one last. So this one gets it twice. That way I always find that these two pegs are joined and I like it better that way. Okay, or you could have gone around this way and cast off and then it would have taken it from the last peg to the first. But this is just a natural, for, it's natural for me to go this direction. So um, when I'm doing this, this part, so that's how I do it. But if you have a different way and uh, it's easier for you, then you go ahead and do that, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take all of these. I'm going to cast off onto all these pegs and then remove it. And then I'll see you back. Almost done, friends. All right, so I have my cute little piece off the, so off the loom. I'm going to just stretch it out. It's so soft. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the one end. I'm going to reinforce it around the the um top row of stitches there then i'm going to take this yarn poke it through the center and bring it out the other side and then i'll see you back all right all reinforced i came back on because i didn't want you to forget to tie that little knot in through the center pull it through and pull hard and get that knot to come to the inside okay now you're going to take this side and you're going to do the same thing okay you're going to leave that one long because you're going to use it to sew on. You're going to tighten this up, smoothing it out so it's all nice and beautiful. You're going to reinforce it around that circle there. And then you're going to tie these two knotted off really, really well. Okay, and then I'll see you back. <laughs> all right, so once you have that done, you're going to take these two ends. And you're going to tie a real tight knot so that you snug up the one side close to the other side. Tie another knot to secure. Then the shortest one, you're gonna just cut off. Just like that, okay? Then you're gonna just play with this to get it into a nice flat circle. That's the right side. Okay, then we're going to take our piece and we're gonna line it up in the center of the arms. I'm gonna raise my camera one second. We're gonna line it up into the center there, letting our arms be our our um, visual as well as the ears and I'm going to go almost down to the chin not quite there's about a half an inch there okay I'm going to take this yarn end and I'm going to bring it out to the side do what I always do tie a little knot to secure so that when I pull on it it's not going to change the compromise the shape of this by by gathering it okay so put it back on where I want it to go then I'm going to take my yarn onto my needle and I'm going to sew this this piece onto the onto the face okay and you're going to pick up a couple like you can go down to like two layers if you can but you're going to go really close to the nose you do not want to see lines your stitch lines coming out okay those have to be hidden so you're coming close 
to the border and then you are going to sew it up just like I'm grabbing some I don't know what's with this yarn needle it must be a little bit dull for some reason but I don't think they can get dull <laughs> but we're going to just keep doing that all the way around I'm just going to show you in one second here you will see I have no lines showing this one is here I'm going to fix that one that's where I started okay and you want to get right close to the rim and pick up just close to the outside edge here and keep going all the way around secure your piece and when you're done that you're going to knot off you're going to hide it in the head cut it off okay and I'll see you back all right so this is just looking so adorable oh I just love it we're going to work on the nose now okay so you're going to put a long piece of black yarn onto your needle we're going to go into the side of the head and here's the point of our nose right here we're going to go above it okay so I'm going to go into the side of the head and right above it into the center there and pull that through leaving just a long enough tail here to tie off okay when we're done, we'll come out that same space and we'll tie off and hide it, okay? So I probably cut this off way too long, but we're going to make a triangle. So we're going to go up to the top here. We're going to go across. That's about even. I think so. And we're going to, we can always fix it. If it's not, then we can add to it. So we're going to pull that across. I'm not going to pull it so tight that it looks funny like that, okay? You always got to just let it go till it meets the fabric doesn't compromise the tight the the shape okay back into the point up beside that black one right there right on the very edge of that of that ivory okay I'm not going above it because I don't want it to I don't want it to come out of the pink I want it to come out of the base of the ivory okay otherwise it will look funny and then I'm going to go back into the point up on this side just at the edge pull it through use my finger to guide that beside that other one just like that and I'm going to go back and forth like that back and forth back and forth into this point um, until I can can shade that in so you go ahead and you finish I'll do one more see I'm coming up just where that seam is pulling it then I'm going to guide it with my finger to go right beside this other one just like that and I'm going to continue that pattern just like so coming up right at the edge until I have this whole part whole triangle filled in okay take your time make it beautiful if you have strands that are going here and there and everywhere it doesn't look as nice so pay um, attention to detail in that respect too and fill that in and then I'll see you back all right how did it go I'm done here I just got to put one more right there and then I'm going to take my point a little bit lower because it's kind of squared off there so I'm just going to go down just like ever so slightly <laughs> and then I'm going to go straight down and come out okay you'll see in one second I'll show you oops I got a double strand in there now okay so here is the middle I've come down and it's not centered so I'm going to go through that little loop there now it's centered and then I'm going to go back up to that point and back down let me get in the camera here back down I like to have two strands for this part okay so that's one I'm going to go back in to where that point is and I'm going to come out the side of the head where this little guy is in the same stitch just like that okay and I'm gonna pull that and there we go just gonna maneuver this just a little bit okay just like that now what you're gonna do is you're going to cut this off it's easier to work with it if it's shorter you're going to tie a knot but when you tie your knot don't pull it so tight that it pulls on that okay you just want to get your knot in there just like that put it back on your needle into that same stitch and out the back okay then you can pull up on it cut it off take your needle 
pull up on those stitches and right here too and it covers it covers where it was okay so there we go we have our face done I don't like this nose I think I'm gonna have to put I'm gonna play with it but I might put another little strip right in there just so that I don't see it's thinner right here I should have gone up to here and all the way down but um I see that now and I'll probably fix it okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the eyes on now if you are just going to um, use yarn to make your eyes then you just place them really close to your to your nose there I bought these buttons at Amazon they come in all kinds of sizes and I don't even know what the measurements are um, but I'm just gonna choose two that I think are right um, those are too small I think these were the ones I used on my other bear I'm gonna go measure them to the bear and they're like the eye shape, but they're like a button. So you see this? You put your thread through there. I love that because then they're not going to fall off. They're going to stay on and you're not going to have to worry about any child choking on them. Um, so I, and this, they come in a lot of different ones. Like there's so many of these tiny, tiny wee ones, which I'll probably never use. Um, so next time I order them, I'm probably going to just order them individually if I can. And uh, I think this is probably a 12 millimeter. That's generally my go-to size of eye um, for animals. Um, that might be a little bit bigger. I'm not sure. But anyways, but I'm going to take two of them. Okay, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Oopsie. I'm going to thread my yarn needle, this small one, this small wool needle. I also get those on Amazon. They have a little plastic end. I'm gonna, that fits through this eye so nicely. I'm going to place it right at the corner of the nose there on both sides and just a little bit down. Or, uh, pardon me, just a smidgen over. So about like that. And I'm going to pull that through the back of the head. Like that. Then I'm going to take the other side. And I'm going to... Put that back into there, making sure it goes over another strand. Come out the back of the eye. And it's going through the stuffing, so it's not gonna come, it's not gonna come loose, my friends. It's just not. See, look at that. I love these eyes. And so then, and I of course did way too big, way too long. I'm going to tie that. That knot is tied around that stuffing that's in there. It's not gonna loosen, it's not gonna come off. Okay, then I'm going to hide this, and I'm going to do it for the other eye. I've used different different um, safety eyes in the past, and I'm always scared that they're gonna fall off. So for the most part, I've just sewn them on with yarn. But since I found these, it ain't going nowhere. I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that other one right there. And then I'm gonna fix this little nose and I'll see you right back. I'm just gonna show you. When I put, when I put the second one in, I'm not going into the same hole there. I'm going over the yarn strand here okay and so then it's that's that's what's going to keep it from going through the through the um the bear into the into the head um because there's this piece of yarn that's in between so I'm just going to go over it just like that okay so just a little tip for you to make sure that you do okay there isn't it just like so adorable this is how I'm going to fix this nose because again I always preach attention to detail so I can't leave it <laughs> <laughs> okay I just don't like that it's split there there's a little piece that's there um, and I'm just gonna go back down and fix that little problem very easily okay just like that see the difference that made just a small little thing I'm gonna tie this off hide it and it is done Aren't they just so precious? Oh, I just love them so much. And I wish that you can feel how soft they are. Okay, friends, thanks for joining me. I sure appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful day. And before you go too far, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks again, my friends. See you soon.